And now, another timely and powerful message from Pastor Emmanuel Williams and Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee. Our text, Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. I'll read while you follow. Amen. So we, to avoid the confusion of reading numerous versions at the same time, I'll read from the version they use in heaven. That's the King James Version. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, verses 1, read. And Saul, yet breathing out threats and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, it's not good. Tell your it's not good. To breathe out threats and slaughters against the people of God. <laughs> uh, glory. Say it again. It is not good to breathe out threats and slaughter against the people of God. Yeah, God takes it personal. Mm? Hallelujah. And so, not only did he breathe out threats and slaughters, the text says to us that he went to the high priest. And verse 2 says, And desired of the high priest letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, you know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. So he's referring to Christianity. Back then, Christianity was called the way. Today, we call it Christianity. But back then, it was called the way because Jesus said, I am the way. The way. Uh -huh. So the verse tells us there that he said, I'm going. He got letters from the high priest in Damascus that if he found any Christians, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And the inference there is men, women, or children. His goal was to go to Damascus and drag families back to Jerusalem to imprison them if they were Christians. Yes. And so the text tells us in verse 3, And as he journeyed, can you say as he journeyed? As he journeyed. That's why he said it's not good to bring threats and slaughters against the children of God. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Tell somebody and suddenly... And That's a good word. Yeah. Amen. And suddenly, there shined round about him a light from heaven. Verse 4 says, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Saul answered, Who are you, Lord? How did he know it was Jesus Christ? Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, do not breathe out threats and slaughter against the people of God. Yes, yes, God takes it personal. You might just have a suddenly in, on, your, on your case. You might just have a sudden visit from Jesus Christ because Jesus takes these threats personally yes yes tell your neighbor I'm okay I'm okay because I have a high priest who's touched with the very feelings of my infirmities can you say that yes say it I'm okay I have a high priest who's touched with the very feelings of my infirmities yes yes he's touched yeah, we are together. Amen. Amen. He feel, Can you say he fills me? He fills me. Yes, yes, he fills me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We just sang, what a wonderful name. What a powerful name. The name of Jesus. The good name of Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. You know, I, you know, I know this text is a very familiar text and uh, it records the dramatic conversion of Saul. I mean, we all are aware of that. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here to talk about the conversion of Saul. God took me a different place last evening. I mean, here am I seated, smiling. It's a familiar text, praise the Lord. And I'm going through like I usually do. And the Lord said, hold on, Emmanuel. Amen. I got something to say. 
<laughs> oh, hallelujah. You know, as I said, it's, a, it's one of the most dramatic conversions recorded in Christendom. But uh, I want you to lean further with me into the passage. I want you to pass the dramatic conversion of Saul. And I want you to see what the text is about. And I believe the text is about Jesus' unexpected intervention to defend his people. Mm -hmm. Can you say Jesus? Jesus. Unexpected intervention Unexpected. to defend his people. Defend. Jesus stepped in to protect his own. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not without help. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody I'm not without help. I'm not without yeah, yeah. The night may be long. Yeah, the night may be long, but I'm came here to tell you it's morning time. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Now, let me tell you, since this is not the first time Paul is mentioned, Saul is mentioned in the book of Acts. If you turn next door to Acts chapter 8, where we are told in verse 3, just after the burial of Stephen, if you go to Acts 8, 3 quickly, let, let's see what the text tells us about Saul before, just after the burial of Stephen. Remember, they murdered Stephen at the end of chapter 7. Amen. Saul stood there and everybody placed their coat at the feet of Saul, which means that Saul was the instigator. He was the one in charge. He was the one in charge of the gang who murdered Stephen. Mm -hmm. And he was satisfied because who are these people? Mm -hmm. He read uh, Galatians 13. Uh, um, uh, I think it's Galatians chapter 13 verse 13 tells us that um, anyone who dies on a cross is cursed. And Paul is saying in his mind, this man died, he was hung on the cross. What are these Christians talking about? What is there about this man Jesus? I'm going to wipe them out because this is a threat to Judaism. I want to keep Judaism pure. I want to protect Judaism. Forget God and his agenda. I have my agenda. And the man is sincere. How many of you would agree that the man is sincere? Yes. But how many of you know that you can be sincerely wrong? And being sincere is not the best option every time there are so many religions out there very sincere how many of you know about them they are so kind and so polite praise the lord they knock on your door and people say oh they're so nice they're so sincere look if jesus is not their lord forget about sincerity you can be sincere and go straight to hell all right the Bible tells in, in Acts chapter 8 verse 3, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into homes and hauling, can you say haul? Hauling, dragging men and women commit and committed them to prison. The imagery here is that of a lunatic. This is the imagery, the phrase, this phrase right here, hauling men and women. This is the imagery. That's projected. That's projected here. It's like a lunatic kicking on doors and dragging people to prison without the benefit of having a court hearing. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or another, another imagery is that of an army plowing through and decimating a defenseless village. That's how he was. The man had a lot of rage. Rage inspired by the devil. Mm -hmm. He want to stamp out Christianity. The devil's, the devil's goal, we are told in John 10, 10, is to steal, kill, kill and, and we see it happening here. But he needs a human being to do that. He needs a human to cooperate with his plan. And he's found his man. So he thought. <laughs> ah, glory be to Jesus. He want to stamp out Christianity in its embryonic state when it's a baby. That's what he wants. That's always the devil's plan. Since every the same thing is after marriage is four, five, six years old. He's trying to take it out. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. Anything that's on the earth. He's after you and I. He doesn't relent. Let me say that again. He doesn't relent. He, but he needs somebody to cooperate with his program. Do not cooperate with him. Because he's a liar and he's the father of lies. Hallelujah. So Saul was revered by many. Uh huh. A rising superstar who belonged to the religious elite of his day thought he was a somebody. Rising. Everybody, Saul, 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 Saul. But one intervention from Jesus Christ, one, just one, knocked him from his horse, 
threw him to the ground. He lost his sight and his entourage scattered like roaches. <laughs> just, 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 just one intervention from Jesus. And Jesus didn't do much. He just showed up with light. That's all he did. He just showed up with light. You see, Jesus has been quiet for a little while. Let me tell you, saints, don't you, don't you worry. Don't you worry if the devil, when he's roaring, coming after you, when he's using, when he's using so-called powerful people to come after you. One intervention from God. That, that's all they need. One intervention from your Jesus. Can you say my Jesus? My Jesus. Yeah, that's all. Just say, Father, can you please intervene? Yes, yes, yes. On my behalf. That's it. It's going to be all right. Here you have a man on the earth. Amen. Well known, well recognized. Sat at the feet of Gamaliel. Mm, they thought he had it going on. Went about. Selected his entourage. Get his gang together. Can you say gang? gang? Yeah, and they're going after Christians to destroy them. And God is sitting back. God is quiet. Listen to me, saints. Don't you misunderstand God's quietness for weakness. God's quietness should be translated as patience. God is reaching out to you. He's reaching out to me. You see everybody talking about God and saying what they want. And, you know... The, expressing themselves and so on the day is coming when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess guess what your knee will bow my knee will bow with all our talk with all our talk and wanting scripture to support us and our ways and not humbling ourselves yeah the day is coming Guess what? Saul found out. Saul found out. Amen. One intervention, it was over just like that. Can you say just like that? Just like that. So don't you worry the enemy. Amen. Don't you worry of Satan trying to destroy you, trying to threaten you, trying to take your stuff. Say it won't work. No, it won't work. It won't. So the Lord Jesus did not send me here this morning to talk to you about the conversion of soul. But rather he sent me to tell you this. This is what the Lord sent me to tell you. Just like I, Jesus, suddenly rescued the sins in Damascus from the fury of Saul. Now that the 40 days of fasting is over. <laughs> I'm talking to those of you who want to fast. I know some of you, you are not really. But for those of you who want the 40 day fasting, God said to me, I am going to suddenly rescue you from the harassment of the devil. Yes, 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 yes. That's a word from God. Since I didn't come up with that, I did not. I was on my way talking to talk about the conversion of Saul. And God said to me, hey, hey, the fast is over. Now it's my turn. Yeah, yeah, he said, no, it's my turn. Yes, he said, meet, he sent me to tell you, Jesus, to your rescue. Yes, this is the title of the sermon this morning. I forgot to tell you, it's Jesus to your rescue. It's Jesus to our rescue. Yes, Thank you, God. A sudden rescue from Jesus, amen? Oh, uh, Jesus said he himself, will come personally to rescue us from those who are taunting us. Amen. Whether it's a sickness, a, a disease, an attack on our bodies. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a troubled marriage, a troubled relationship. You know, sometimes there are delays, unnecessary delays. You're just asking God, where, why is there such a delay? Why has it been so long? Why can't you take care of that situation for me? It's been a long, it's been a long time. And I'm getting weary. God said, today is your day of salvation. Amen. Yeah, now is your day of salvation. Hallelujah. Now, and I'll tell you, I've been waiting on God. I've been t talking to God and believing God for something since. It's been a long time coming. I've been in prayer and talking to God. Father, if you just do this for me, if you just do that for me, and sometimes you just have to forget it and move on. And God reminded me, you remember this you talked to me about last night. You remember this? And I said, yes, Lord. I said, Father, I'm ready for a miracle. Amen. I'm ready for a miracle. 
Look, I cannot fight in my own strength. Say, but God. But God. Yeah, but God. Yes, sir. But God. Yes, sir. But God, just like he showed up suddenly to rescue. You remember Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah? You remember them? Well, let me talk English. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's how you all know them. Amen. So just like he showed up to rescue them, and just like he rescued his disciples from the wrath of the Pharisees, God sent me to tell you, he's here today to rescue you. Yeah, he's here today to rescue us. The fast is over. Now is his turn. He said, I'm going to rise like a giant awakened from sleep. And I'm coming with strength in my right hand and healing in my wings. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 verse 2. Can you go there quickly? Eh? The Lord placed this on my heart. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 verse 2. And sometimes, you know, we've been in the struggle so long. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes when you've been in the struggle so long, you lose your fire. You lose your passion sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you get weary. How many of you agree? Sometimes the road can get weary. And sometimes when the victory comes, we are not that excited. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, for those of you who fasted for the 40 days, your reward is knocking at your door. Yeah, your reward is knocking at your door. Hallelujah. All you got to do is step into it. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Isaiah 43 verse 2. Amen, you got it? It reads, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire... <laughs> you shall not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon you neither shall you smell like smoke what a blessing hallelujah notice what he used he used the rivers he used the waters he used the fire and he used the word flame you, you remember you remember when Jesus when the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea He's referring to the generation of Moses. He said, they passed through the waters. That here is really the sea water. You remember when the Red Sea parted and the waters stood up and they passed by. That's what he said. When you pass through the waters, that's Moses' generation. When he said, I will be what? With, with you. I will be with you. I'm not sending you by yourself. I'll be what? With you. That is why Jesus told Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? He didn't say my people. No, no, no. He said my people and I, we are one. We are inextricably linked together. I am the head. They are my body. And when you touch them, you touch me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And look, the, de the devil has been messing with you. As of today, it's over. It's over today. Delaying your stuff. Intercepting progress. It is over as of today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And he continued to Joshua's generation. He said, and through the rivers... You remember Jordan River, Jordan opened up just, just when they were on the brink of the promised land. Jericho. The priest stepped into the river and the river parted. He said, when you go through the rivers, I shall what? Sorry, they shall not overflow you. Wow. When Jordan, you can read the story, when Jordan parted Jordan overflowed it was overflowing at the time uh-huh and Jordan just Jordan just backed up what a blessing the waters just congealed stood up like a wall and the priest stood in the middle of Jordan and the Israelites passed on dry land right to the promised land God sent me to tell you today's your turn because he is our priest He's our high priest. Uh huh. And he's went ahead of us. Hallelujah. Glory be. Can you tell your neighbor that's good news? Yeah, that's good news. That's good news. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And he continues. He continues. He said, he said, when you walk through the fire, he's going to Shadrach, Meshach. We call them Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He's, that's who he's referencing here. When they were in the fire. Mm -hmm. What happened when they were in the fire? Glory be to Jesus. The king came out. What was the king's name? You remembered? Yeah, they called him Neb. King Nebuchadnezzar. Neb came out and Neb looked. And Neb said, I thought we sent three men in there. But there is a fourth man. But he looks like the son of God. Because he was in the fire with them. When you go through the fire, I will be with you. Look, the saints in Damascus were going through some heat. The devil had possessed a man called Saul. And he was hot on their trail. And they were in fear. They were cowering. And Saul was right at the entrance of Damascus. And the Bible says, Jesus said, enough is enough. You, you see, the first time when Paul murdered, when Paul and his gang, his entourage murdered Stephen, the Bible says Jesus stood up on the right hand side of God. Are you with me? Now many people said, well, Jesus stood up to welcome Stephen home because he was the first murder. I think Jesus stood up to intervene and God tell him hold on hold on hold on hold on his dad said hold on just hold on one second the time is coming uh, <laughs> uh, and when Jesus saw Saul and his entourage was about to enter Damascus and murder his Christian God said it's all right now you can go <laughs> God said you stood up for Stephen I asked you to sit down but this time you go ahead my son intervene and the Bible said he showed up with light <laughs> that's all you need Jesus just to show up in your situation and that supervisor who's been giving you trouble Oh God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. That individual who think they got it going on. <laughs> that person who think that they have power over you. They will know who is Lord of Lords. And who is the King of Kings. They will know who is the mighty warrior. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. They will know who you serve. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a warrior. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, he said the, the, the fire, thou shalt not be burnt in the fire. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Uh, uh, let, can you go to verse 3 quickly? Verse 3. Notice what God is doing. Amen. God just made a promise. And he's telling them some things about himself to encourage them. So they won't give up. He's not, he's not just making an empty promise. He's making a promise and he's telling them, I'm able to bring it through. He said, you will not, you'll pass through the, you'll pass through the water. He said, you will go through the river. He said, the fire will not burn you. He said, you'll not smell of smoke. And then he tells you why. For I am. For I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I thank you. He didn't say for the government. No, no, no. He didn't say for Congress got you. He said for I. I am the Lord. The word Lord here is Yahweh. The covenant keeping God. The God who has all the resources. The Lord of armies. He said, I am the Lord. And he said, thy God, that word God here is Elohim. El Elion, it means possessor of heaven and earth. Ah, God, I give you praise. Not only am I to come, not, a, not only am I able to come through based on, uh, based on my covenant keeping name, but I want you to know I'm in charge. Yeah, yeah, I'm in charge. I own this earth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he continues, the Holy One of Israel. You know, Jesus was called all these names. Jesus was called God. That same Jesus who appeared. Some of you are saying, where, did, where was Jesus called God? Let me show you. <laughs> Can you go to 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1? Because I want you to see, he's talking here about Jesus. Even in the Old Testament, amen? 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. 
He used three names. The Lord, so Simon Peter, servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. Anybody in here yes, yes, yes. has like precious faith? Amen. Yes, yes. Peter is saying here, can I encourage you quickly? As I'm moving along, Peter said the same faith I have. Guess who have it? You do. Peter walked down the street, Peter walked down the streets of Jerusalem. His shadow fell on people. They got up from their grave. They got up from their bed. They got healed. And he said, that same faith I have. That same precious faith, you have it. <laughs> and he said, he said, like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior. Who's that? Jesus. He called Jesus God and he called Jesus whom? Savior. So that Jesus who appeared to Saul is God and he's Savior and he's the Holy One. Peter referred to him in his first sermon, after, on his first sermon after the day of Pentecost. Peter called Jesus the Holy One of Israel. So these three words all referring to whom? Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's our brother. And he's our king. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Yes, he does. Don't you worry anymore. It's going to be a okay. It's going to be all right. The Lord, amen. The Lord has heard your prayers. You know, let me show you. This. Let me show this with you quickly. Let me show this to you before I bring this to an end. God, I give you praise. Glory be to Jesus. Since I tell you, hear me. I did not come here to teach this. I was doing my, I was, I was, you know, I've taught Acts chapter I've taught Acts chapter 9 for about 10, 15 times. Never like this. Because God said to me, the fast is over. Now is my turn. Yes. Now is my turn. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. This is what the Lord said to me. And the very same thing he said to Moses. You remember when Moses, uh, when he approached Moses in the burning bush. You remember that? Yes. Here with me, bear with me since I'm trying to get this test. Can you go to Exodus chapter 3 verse 7? And then I'll go to one more scripture. I'll bring it home. Exodus chapter 3. God told me there are some of you. You've been, it's been a long night. The night has been long. He said you've been battling with some things. But he said I'm coming to close the deal. Yeah, he said I'm coming to close the deal. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the, to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to, Ho in, even to Horeb. Oh, sorry, did I say that? No, no, so no, I said Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, sorry. Verse 7, not verse 1, I'm so sorry. Okay, it reads, and the Lord said, this is God talking to Moses. Uh -huh. He said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. Who are in Egypt. You know Egypt is a type of the world. Yes, so God, is, God said to me. I have seen the struggles of the people. At imitators of God ministries. Who are in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I have heard their prayers. Yeah. Yeah. I have listened to them. Uh -huh. And the fast is over. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I'm coming now. Uh -huh. yeah. To recompense. Uh -huh. He said. Listen here. Yeah, yeah, he, said, he said. And I have heard their cry. <laughs> How many of you have cried sometimes in prayer? Oh, yeah. Asking God, just, God, just want, can you just do this thing for me? Yeah. Can you make a way for me? Yeah. Yeah. It's been hard. Yeah. It's been long. Yeah. I have no influence over this right here. Yeah. Can you stretch your hands? Yeah. God said, I heard your cry. You, I heard your cry. You. Yeah. He said, by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Uh, he said, I, know, I do what? I know their sorrows. This is, it means I, I feel their pain. Yeah, God said he feels your pain. Yeah, you've been going through some things. It's going to be all right. Yes, he said he's heard your prayers. Yeah. You know, sometimes when nobody's there, you go on your knees. And you begin to talk to God. Many times I've tipped told on my mother. If I've eavesdropped on a conversation. My, I would hear my mom talking to God. Talking to God about my father. Talking to God about me. And my brother and my sister. Talking to God about situations. Talking to God about relationships. And many times I would stand there listening to my mother. Praying and the tears would roll from my eyes. I know many of you have done that. You've been to God and go to your knees and say. Father this is beyond me. But it's not from without your hand. You have control. You possess the universe. 
Certainly you can step in and change my situation. Yes. Uh huh. I've done it. Yes. Many days I've pasted this floor. Uh -huh. And talked to God about this church. Establishing this church. Uh -huh. Establishing the different departments in the church. Uh -huh. Many, many days calling your name. Talking to God. Amen. Bring healing. Yes. On your wings. Yes. Sharp with your mighty right hand. Yes. And God said today is the day. Yes. yes. Today is the day. Of your salvation. Because I am the Lord your God. Possess of heaven and earth. Oh hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Now, now notice. Let, let, me, let me bring this to a close quickly. Notice the mental disposition. Of Saul before his demise. Can you go to verse 1. Verse 1 quickly. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 9 verse 1. And I'm going to bring it home quickly. Notice what's going on here. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9 verse 1, Saul, amen, you, you, you know when people feel that they're in control and they are unstoppable, they just say things. Uh -huh. yeah. They say, they decide, they prophesy what they're going to do to you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because they think that they're unstoppable. Yeah. And so here he's talking, I'm going to take out these Christians. Uh -huh. they won't buy. He said, but before the day is over, uh -huh. they'll be done. Uh -huh. And he got his men together. He called his guy, he, his guys. He called Willie. He called Frankie. He went down the road, got Conrad. <laughs> On his way, he picked up Rory. And Ronaldo. Ronaldo is his boy. <laughs> And he's talking, uh, he said, he, he's breathing threats, making murderous. The word slaughter here means murderous statements. There may be those who are making threatening and murderous statements against you. They may be superiors at work, elsewhere, plotting against you. It won't work. There may be people who are threatening to take your, your property. It won't work. It may be sickness uh -huh. threatening your life. Yeah. It won't work. It won't work. It can't work because I'm God's property. No weapon formed against you. Shall what? No weapon. Nothing the enemy try. It won't work. Because I'm God's property. Yes. Since you've got to believe that. Yes. I cannot believe that for you. I can just share the goodness with you. Yes. You've got to believe that. Psalms 27 verse 13 says. David said in Psalms 27 verse 13. After he got all the prophecies. Yes. After he got all the good words. He said. I would have fainted. Unless I had believed. To see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. He said even though I was anointed. Even if I was told. I had to believe. Believe, to see the goodness of the Lord. You have to believe to see. I cannot believe for you. You have to believe it. It doesn't happen by abracadabra. No. Abracadabra doesn't work in Christianity. You've got to believe. That good news I'm talking about. You have to believe it to see it. God sent me to tell you, suddenly, he's taking care of it. Amen. Suddenly, he gave me a word for you. Psalms 102 verse 13. Can you go to Psalms 102? I'm almost done. Psalms 102 verse 13. He, I heard that loud and clear last evening while I was meditating. Thank you, Jesus. you got it? Psalms 102 verse 13. If I were you, I would memorize this verse. This is a word from the Lord. You know, you know sometimes people say, thus saith the Lord. Uh, this word is a thus saith the Lord word here. Yes, Psalms 102 verse 13. You got it? It says here, thou shall arise and have mercy. Put your name there. Take out Zion. Put your name. Upon Emmanuel. For the time to favor him. Yes, the set time is when? Now. Yeah, God is going to rise and favor me. You better tell somebody that. <laughs> Prophesy it. He said, for the time to favor me is now. Yes, the set time wow. is now. Wow. Set 
the set time there is a set time and the set time is when now oh you better tell yourself that in the mirror I told myself that last night boy the set time is now the set time is now the set I, I, I almost made a song the set time is now the set time is now the set time is now I went to bed the set time is now <laughs> the set time is now the set time is now God is a rugged. He has a reason. Uh -huh. That's what happened in Damascus. He arose to bring what? To favor the Christians in Damascus. He had mercy on them. And appeared to Saul. Oh glory be to God. This is a verse for you. Don't you memorize this verse? God has a, has a reason. And have mercy upon Emmanuel. Put your name there. Here is why. For the time to favor me. The time to favor you. Is now. The set time is now. Don't you let it escape you. It doesn't matter what you feel. What you see. The set time is now. Say the set time is now. Say my set time is now. My set time is now. Hallelujah. 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 Yes my set time is now. Hallelujah. My set time is when? Yes. Now, now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. God is such a merciful God. After hearing Stephen prayed, at the end of Acts 8, Saul heard Stephen prayed. He heard Stephen said in Acts chapter, can you go to Acts chapter 7, verse 5, 59? Listen to what Saul heard the man prayed. Listen to what Saul heard Stephen prayed. They're stoning Stephen. And Stephen is not using expletives. Mm -hmm. He's about to die. He's about to what? Die. A gruesome death. Being stoned and he's going down. Stoned. Stones are hitting his head. His nose. His lips are busted. And, he, and, and Saul heard him praying. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Verse 60. As they were stoning him, he couldn't stand anymore. He fell to his knees and cried with a loud voice. Lord, let not this sin to their charge. That still did not touch Saul's heart. God is reaching to Saul through Stephen saying the unpardonable sin is not murder. <laughs> this is my way reaching out to you extending my goodness to you to show you that there is still an open door. Oh God I give you praise. And that still did not change Saul's heart. Instead, he grew worse to the point where he began to utter murderous threats against the people of God. And so God said, since you did not understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did refuse my invitation through Stephen. Now it's my turn. Let me tell you this. I didn't realize what God was doing. You know, I have always wanted to get back to Acts 9. We stopped teaching Acts, Acts, on Acts chapter 8 last November. And I've been praying, God, I want to go back to Acts because I love to teach the book of Acts. And the Lord keep telling me, not now, not now. I didn't realize God was waiting for the fast to be over. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To tell us he's coming to deliver us like he came to deliver. The sins in Damascus, the timing was exquisite. I could not time this sermon the way God timed it. This week God said to me, now is the time to preach Acts 9. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so I went and I began working on the conversion of Saul. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. The fast is over. It's my turn. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, this is what, Elder, God did not. So Saul did not hear God. You, this is how, listen, listen to me carefully. If you are here and you are listening today, looking via Facebook, 
Take a listen. Do not underestimate God's quietness. Saul murdered Stephen. God was quiet. And he was emboldened. Now, uh -huh. Saul went to the high priest to get letters. God was quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, he was emboldened. He thought he had it going on. Saul picked his gang, handpicked. God was still quiet. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Saul went and he reserved his vehicles. He made a reservation. Amen. What I'm saying, he got his horses together. He got his donkeys together. God was quiet. <laughs> they jumped on their horses, rode down Damascus Road, drinking lemonade in the hot sun. God was quiet. <laughs> when they reached on the brink of Samaria, you know, sometimes when you stay there and they reach on the brink and they're discussing. They are discussing the plan. Who's going to the water? You're going to this street. I'm going to that street. And, and he said, don't forget, nobody leaves. Uh -huh. We're taking all of them today. And by the time the conversation was over, uh -huh. Jesus appeared on the scene. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to what Jesus, now, now, listen to what Paul himself said. Paul is recounting to King Agrippa. What happened? Now the Holy Ghost moved and looked hard and looked wrote what happened in verse in Acts chapter 9. But listen to Paul's testimony quickly and I'm done after that. I know I've said that four times but bear with me. Can you go? Can you go to Acts chapter 26? Acts chapter 20. This is this is this is the man himself recounting what happened. Verse 12. You got verse 12? Acts 26 verse 12. He's in front of King Agrippa and he's saying, King Agrippa, whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority uh -huh, and commission from the chief priest, verse 13, he said, at midday, O king, he had to say O king, because he, he, it's rushing his memory. I saw in the way, on the way to Damascus, a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun he said the light was brighter than the sun itself <laughs> Woo! shining round about me and them which journeyed with me my entourage verse 14 said and when we were all fallen to the earth Luke didn't tell us they all fell but Saul is telling us here everybody fell down and they scatter like roaches Everybody run. Because the father of light showed up. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 17 that God is the father of lights. Father as in the possessor, the source, the owner of lights. He is the father of lights. Moses spent 40 days, 40 days in the presence of the father of lights. And his face, the skin on his face began to glow. Tell your neighbor, it's time to glow. <laughs> it is time. <laughs> yeah, it is time to what? Time to glow. It's time to shine. It's my time. It's time to shine. The work is over. The Bible says weeping shall endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Tell your neighbor, it's morning time. It's morning time. I see how the old lady says, it's morning time. Forget morning, morning. <laughs> it is that time. The night is over. It's time to glow. It's time to shine. Because it's morning time. Come on somebody, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Say, my time is now. Yes, yes. My set time of favor is now. <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. I, I'm not waiting anymore. I'm not waiting anymore. It's been too long. It's been too long. I've been waiting too long. I've been waiting too long. Today is my day of salvation. 
Yeah, tell yourself today is my day of salvation. Yeah, I'm breaking through. I'm breaking through. God has gone ahead of me. Today is my day. It is my turn. It is my turn. It is my time to glow. It is my time to glow. It's my time to shine. And Father, I thank you. Start thanking God. Say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the breakthrough. I thank you for the miracle. I thank you for the suddenly. I thank you for the suddenly today. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. For you are no respect of persons, Father. You delivered back then you'll deliver today i thank you i thank you hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah god we bless your name god we bless your name hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Says I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. I feel this is my turn. This is my turn. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I'm not doing without anymore. I'm not doing without anymore. No, no. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your deliverance. Thank you, Lord God, for being my savior. My savior. My God. Hallelujah. Can you slip your hands up in the air and just tell him thank you? Thank you, yeah, thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's my time to glow. It's my time to glow. It's my time to glow. Yeah, it's my time to shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I'm not going to be discouraged anymore. I'm not going to sit on the silence and be discouraged. Like I have no help. The devil is a liar. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help. In time of trouble. Hallelujah. God we give you praise. And we give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 Hey God we thank you. We thank you. And we bless your name. Can you say Lord I receive. Lord, I yeah, I receive that word. word. Yes, yeah, said I receive that word. Receive Tell him thank you for your faithfulness. You for your faithful. Hallelujah! Come and give the Lord a, a clap of thank you, Lord. We thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah! I feel so good in my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isn't God a faithful God? Would turn a sermon. Mm, would change a sermon to sue these people. Yeah, yeah, just for me. You know, I needed to hear that. Yeah, I know we all needed to hear that, but I needed to hear that. Hallelujah. I needed one more assurance that God's got me. Yeah, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Yes, he's got my back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Saul, Saul. Why are you kicking against the pricks? You're just trying to hurt yourself. You fight against me. You're fighting a losing battle. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Yeah, this we just thank God. Thank, Father, I thank you. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you see. I thank you, Lord. I got a word from the Lord. This is my time of favor. My set time is when? Now. In Jesus' name. Please take time to meditate on the word and let it sink into your heart and soul and mind today. Knowing that the Christian who meditates on the word will be like a tree planted by the water, bringing forth fruit in its season and prospering in all that he does. But what if you aren't a Christian today? What if you don't know if you're bound for heaven as a forgiven child of God? If that's you, then let's take care of it right now if you're ready. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Are you ready to be forgiven of your sins and washed clean and made new? Are you ready to begin your new life in Christ? Then turn to God right now and say, Lord, I love you. I need you. I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me and wash me clean. I receive your forgiveness right now as I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. 
God, please lead me and teach me and show me how to live from now on. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you're looking for a good church family, you'll be welcomed with open arms at Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee, located at 4750 Capital Circle Southeast near Tram Road. Sunday school begins for all ages at 10 a.m. and the morning service begins at 11 and the Wednesday evening service begins at 7. This is a life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational church where people of all races, backgrounds, and walks of life come together to worship, to be inspired in their love for God, to develop relationships, and to be empowered to live out God's purpose for their lives. Find more information on their website, imitatorsofgodministries.com, or call the church, 850 408 8496.